your overall thoughts on the NBA draft. I was blown away. I was really impressed, to be honest. I thought with the virtual draft, you don't know what to expect. It can seem maybe not as personal or not as not as raw and emotional, uh, which I think is what the draft is really known for, is the emotion that guys show and, and the moment happening right before our eyes and everybody getting to share in it with all the guys that are getting drafted. So I thought the NBA did an awesome job of seeing the raw emotion, being able to be with each guy that was drafted and their family still, even though it was virtual, I thought was fantastic. And even though there were satellite trucks sent out all across the earth in order to get it done, it was it was worth it. And I thought it was a, it was nice to kind of learn something about each guy too. Every time a guy got picked, there was a little pre-recorded snippet if you watched. And it kind of told you something you didn't know, like Patrick Williams, the fourth pick in the draft, his mom is a florist and he's been delivering flowers for the last 13 years. And you're kind of blown away. You're thinking this guy's about to sign a multi-million dollar contract, but he actually had been delivering flowers up until about a week ago. So I thought those little stories you got to see because of the way it was done was, was really cool. Man, I thought the virtual NBA draft should have been sponsored by Kleenex with how many tear jerkers was going on during the whole thing. I was like, my goodness. But I, I'm with you, man. I thought it was dope. Now let's talk about New York City. The number one pick for the New York Knicks, Obi Toppin, going the eighth overall. I know you were high on him before the draft. He landed in New York City. What are your thoughts on the force, Obi-Wan, going number eight to the Knicks? <laughs> I think it was a great pick. I think that coming out of out of coming the way that this draft kind of became what it was because of coronavirus, not getting as much exposure for a lot of guys. Obi Toppin is a sure thing. Naismith Player of the Year. He's gotten better from the junior year of high school until now. You know, to see him develop, to know that you're getting a guy who was 29 and two at date his last season. There, he is a winner. He is a guy that's compared himself to Amari Stoudemire. I think he's born in Brooklyn. You saw the emotion, like you said, it was a little bit of a Kleenex special. The whole draft, everybody was crying. To see the emotion of a guy like Obi Toppin and the excitement to be at the franchise in the New York Knicks. There's some guys that you can tell they don't want to be in certain places. They're not as happy to be drafted somewhere. Obi Toppin is going to live every moment and breathe every breath in order to play his best basketball at Madison Square Garden. You can already tell that. We could already see how excited he was. I've had a chance to have a couple conversations with him since he's been drafted. Both he and Emmanuel quickly thrilled about the opportunity to play in the world's most famous arena. All right, Steve, let's switch gears and go to your squad, the Bucks, drafting some three-point shooters, starting with Louisville's Jordan Wara. What are you thinking? Uh, we can start with Jordan, and then we got to get into Sam Morrell as well. Yeah, the Bucks certainly do need shooters, I think. And again, as we've talked about in the past couple weeks, President Tentacumpo is the big deal. He is the guy that needs to get signed by the Milwaukee Bucks. And the pieces that the Bucks sign are all to keep him and to complement him. And there is no doubt if you can knock down perimeter shots, if you can score from the outside and stretch the floor, Giannis Tentacumpo can be his best. So Jordan Nwora, that's exactly what he does. He's a long, lanky, six foot seven, three point shooter. He can guard a little bit as well, fits right into what the Milwaukee Bucks do. But if you can get guys to spread the floor and just get some attention off of Giannis, you're worth a lot of money, believe it or not. You don't even necessarily have to make a lot of shots. And he was the 45th pick. The Bucks also had the 60th pick, the last pick in the draft. They went for shooting as well with Sam Merrill. So there's no doubt that that was what they put an emphasis on in this draft because of the way Giannis plays. Yeah, uh, Steve, talk, talk to me a little bit more about Sam Merrill because kind of like yourself, he's a late second round pick. He's a shooter. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people talking about him, but, you know, he could probably help his team when it comes to this deep playoff round. So tell me about him. What, what, what are your thoughts? What, did he, what have you seen about him so far? Yeah, he's going to have an uphill battle to, to make this team. There's no doubt he's the 60th pick. So you consider the first 40 picks, they get signed. Those last 20 picks, it's kind of like, let's see what they do in training camp. Let's see how they play in the preseason. But again, the reason he was picked is he can knock down shots. You look at him, you go, look at this 6'5 white boy. Is he quick enough? Can he guard anybody? You know what I think the Bucks think? It doesn't matter. If he can knock down shots, if he can score more points than the guy that he's guarding, we're going to put him on the court. If he can stand in the corner and get attention from his defender so Giannis can drive down the lane and dunk on somebody, they're going to say, guess what? You're valuable to us. I think that's the big deal in this draft is when you get a guy 
that really complements your team and can bring value specifically to your franchise. He definitely fits in Washington. We know that draft day, as exciting as it is, Steve, it is just the start in terms of these gentlemen making their dreams come true. So good luck to all the draftees. Um, we know that it is not something to be taken for granted to land on an NBA roster and be able to build a career in that space. But now, Steve, it's time for our favorite game to play with you. No fact or fiction. <laughs> all right. Here we go. First one, Kaz. All right. What we got Steve this week? Chose, what we got? Steve chose number 20 in honor of his childhood idol, Packers quarterback Joe Francis. Oh. Oh. I'm, I'm going to say this is a no fact. There's got to be a no fact, right? I'm with you. No fact, Steve. This is fiction. I mean, I'm a big, oh. a big Aaron Rodgers. That's far with my childhood hero, Don Mikowski. I even had a little, I'm not sure what Don Mikowski had done. I was young, but it was like a little mullet, a little curl in the back. He was a guy. I wanted to be just like these guys, but it was not Joe Francis. He was actually Allen Houston. I wanted to model my game after him as a teenager, and he wore number 20 as well as anybody. Okay. And, and this, is, right. and this is why Nick fans love you, Steve. This is exactly why. Um, next one. I do want to see you in a mullet, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to see that as well. So, so Monica, this is, this is you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this one. Uh, Steve, you landed a job with the Bucks after spending attending. I'm sorry, Sportscaster U. Is that a no fact or fiction, Monica? I'm gonna go fiction because I feel like Sportscaster U is for people that don't know the game and are trying just to get started. But you were a pro. It's a no fact. This is real. I actually did it. It's a program offered by Players Association and the NBA in the summer. When you're hanging out in the summer, getting your workouts, and you can go and actually go consider doing something else when you're done playing. And I thought to myself, I want to go see if broadcast is something I, I would enjoy. And two weeks after I got back from sportscast with you, Milwaukee Bucks called and said, I know you're maybe considering still playing this year, but if you retire, would you consider doing broadcast? And I did. 